Hi there, everybody. Uh, welcome to room two. My name is uh, Daniel Smith. I'm uh, your host today for the following sessions. Uh, and we're here to introduce uh, you with the first uh, session uh, by uh, Avinash. He's from India, works for Eagle Web, has over 11 years uh, experience as a full stack developer, and he's a real uh, community ent enthusiast. So um, yeah, the stage is yours. Uh, if there are any questions, post them in the, in the chat and I'll ask uh, him afterwards. The stage is yours. Hey, thank you, Daniel. Hello, guys. So I think uh, Daniel has already introduced me about like, so let me just give a small one also. Like I work on a different, different technology, like PHP, Python, Angular, and AWS. And I'm working with like a more tech is like, uh, because I love the platform, the way they build. That's why I always uh, like uh, attracted toward the more tech. So today we are talking about uh, like how to create the custom plugin in a more tech. I think you have we have heard about like there are some extensions, there are some plugins, extra things that are required. So we are just going to go the step by step. If you want to create a custom plugin, what are the things required to be? So today's agenda is like, what is a plugin? Why a custom plugin will be required? How does it help in any system or any framework or any kind of application? Step to follow. And then we will have a jump into a QA session. So let's start. So what is the plugin? Like you, here you can see the, the one picture, right? In different, different color. You can see the electronic sockets are there. A lot of the wires have been put in there and things like. So it's like a, when you are put required any extensions, right? So when you have like uh, anything electronic gadget or something, or you will put some electronic bowl to put it, uh, like increase the wire length, something like that, or increase the functionality of a particular button to add more extra functionality. That's how the plugins work. So it's like an extension. Okay, that's the way it's showing the picture like a plugin. So as I mentioned, right, it add extra things other than the existing feature and the functionality to the particular product. Okay. So it's like showing in the switchboard. So when you are uh, things like that, so in, in, in our uh, like any of application also be something like that because we don't want to do any kind of things or mess up, right? That will require a plugin because without uh, mess up in the internal networking structure of the any electronic switchboard, right? We can just modify the things and add extra feature on that. So why it required I mean, to add extension of existing feature of function? What does it mean that? Add extension of the existing feature of the functions means like suppose like you know if you are aware about the modic or any application like modic so there are functions called add lead update lead edit lead or import lead or you can just add a segment update segment add segment to the uh, like add lead to segment these are multiple functionality that are like create template so these are the functionality so when any any open source technology or any application has been built right it builds in the top of that they will keep updating their code base whenever there is a bugs are there whenever there is security patches are required whenever there is the existing new functionality is required that time we keep upgrading so it is a good it is a good to make a changes in our uh, the core data core uh, code base no i really say it's a big no okay because the thing is when you touch the core data uh, code base right it like uh, hamper your existing functionality and so when you upgrade it will get lost your whatever the functionality you have been implemented so the line is say the add extension of existing feature is like you can extend like something whatever there is existing functionality there you can add some extension to particular existing functionality okay so i'll be a uh, walk through also one example on that like, like how the extension can be added to the existing feature of the function okay next point is like if any customer custom modification required in a core file so as i mentioned the right so whenever you have to change like something the core file doesn't have anything a required functionality or is not working as it required to be as per your business uh, requirement then yes you can uh, make a changes uh, in your core uh, in a, your uh, uh, logic but not in a core file in a extension work there is a way to do that uh, to changes in the when you are uh, doing the changes in a core logic third 
like to integrate third party tools such as a mailer e commerce crm or any other application like dialer okay so when when we are go integrating something some sms uh, sml integration some email integration suppose some of one of the uh, email uh, integration is not available already in a uh, modic already pre built right you can create your own custom uh, plugin using the third party integration tool okay there you can implement your gmail or any other tool like mailchimp you are using it or some other like aws sql uh, csu using it any kind of tool you can create using the custom function another example can be uh, if you are using a different uh, tool for crm and different tool for the uh, marketing automation then you can uh, play a handshake between the them to create like whenever there is the list comes in a crm you can uh, inject into the marketing automation or whenever there is the marketing automations come something inside the uh, crm uh, uh, motic you can uh, in, inject into the crm so somewhere it's like a like, handshaking of the two system you can build using the the uh, fun, uh, plugin okay so that's the way you can integrate a third party tools okay how does it help okay so how oh, generally uh, even i uh, we check in the first slide right what is the plugin so how you you have got the idea about like how it help so it like it gives the extension of the using functionality let's, let's look at that one like it's keeping the safe upgrade so what is the mean by safe upgrade right so when any uh, so, uh, software has been built right uh, in a uh, like any open source uh, thing so they they always keep a mind intellect uh, they have to upgrade it and what is the mean by safe upgrade like when you don't touch anything uh, in a core uh, functionality of any files right which is the comes in our package of the any uh, software like motic also come up with their own code base right if you don't touch that the code base then no need to worry about it but if you are doing some changes in a core data, uh, core file right then you are in a danger zone because then you will not be able to do the safe upgrade because if any bug any bug has been fixed for a particular file which you have been uh, made right then it will be a problematic then it, your file will get overwritten so keeping the your safe upgrade right you require uh, that custom plugin functionality give more control over the functionalities uh, like so it's like a, you can add a, a the extension right you can add more and more, more functionality whichever you require it without touching your existing motic functionality because sometimes like whenever product has been built right it always comes with a different different uh, i just said but every different business may, may require something required to have extra functionality so that's the way uh, plugins help you here plugin gives you a, like the the pathway to add extra functionality inside uh, the motic So plugin help you to extend the motic however you need. Okay, that is a very beautiful lines uh, of the motic generally. Okay, so it help you to extend your motic however you need. Like so there is a no boundary. Okay, because it's a build off uh, of the uh, like Symphony based framework also, and Symphony has a variety of the documents available. How to create a bundle? How to create customize the file? How to override a single file? And Motic is a build on top of the Symphony framework, and based on that, the code has code base has been implemented. So it gives the way you can be a extend the functionality whichever you require. Okay, so there is no boundary, there is no limit to override. Like, uh, like frankly speaking, like very like I have done a lot of the uh, extension extension changes in a Motic whichever that's for the business requirement. Okay. So now we are understand about the plugin, how it required, how why it required also, and it can be helpful. Right? Like so, let's let's jump into the code base. Like what is things required to be done, right? Okay, two so steps to follow it. So first is like first decide what is the purpose of the plugin. Like purpose of plugin, like uh, why you why you you will require this plugin. Like example, if you are going to change uh, your any existing code base, like controller or any model file or any uh, event uh, extension, or you are going to do some third party integration, or you are going to add any extra just uh, extra new feature itself. Like even even not even overriding the feature, but adding the extra feature or extra field inside any, any form. Then decide like what. Are you going to do with the plugin? What is the purpose of that? And based on the purpose, give a relevant name to the particular uh, plugin. So generally, plugin names come up with a bundle. Like uh, in a name, always be a bundle uh, name will be always in the last of the particular plugin folder. Okay, and that will give a, be a best option uh, kind of things to do to do that. So like suppose if you are having a 
like dialer uh, integration so dialer integration bundle suppose you have a some different uh, crm like zoho crm uh, integration like zoho crm bundle like where you can just specify your purpose and your uh, the name of the purpose plugin then the create a folder inside the plugin so if you can see the uh, motic uh, code base right in the, the motic code base there is a folder called plugin folder okay and then inside the folder you can just create a plugin a folder uh, inside the plugin folder you can create your own bundle bundle folder like that and it will i'll show you the the diagram of the like a folder structure okay how it look the when you open the motic code base and where the plugin inside the plugin you can just create the bundle which you are required like third step is the create the first basic file required like whenever you are creating a bundles like same bundle more from same name you have to keep it as a bundle that is our entry point for each and every bundle or each and every plugin so going forward i'll just mention the name called bundle okay so create the example bundle. now suppose example if you are taking the example bundle as a plugin folder take as a same example and create the example bundle.php inside the plugin example bundle folder okay then create a config folder inside the example bundle okay config will have a what a file you have to override it what is the name of the plugin who are the author of plugin what is the purpose of plugin and what is the version of the plugin these are the things we'll be having inside the config okay and i'll just walk through on that part also uh, how it will be okay uh, then the create a uh, config inside and you can have a config.php file will be there inside the reside one fifth create a file call inside the config as i mentioned inside the folder called config okay let's look at how this code is look like okay so you can see here the the first is the example bundle.php is mentioned here okay so here you can just first mention the path of the, your bundle file and then you can create an embed called motic plugin example bundle it's a very standard online if you have any bundle name like suppose active bundle or zoho crm bundle you can just use that a motic plugin slash and the zoho crm bundle then you have to use as a this as a base class okay bundle plugin bundle base as a plus class okay these are very standard you have to use it as a, when you are creating very basic plugin use the example bundle as same name as uh, what we are given for a bundle uh, name as a class name and the extend you have to extend the plugin bundle base okay inside this code you, have, you can do the many of the things like overriding some controller or which uh, control has to uh, log or which event has to listen all this can, can be done in the inside the bundle files okay now next is the config file as I mentioned, this is inside the config folder. So give us that path to the config folder. And it will have some basic array here, the name, description, author name, version, and route. So route, like if you are creating any extra features, which will have a different route, you can create it like that. So current, whatever current plot, like suppose modic slash lead slash add, lead slash create, something like you can create something different also. Okay, if nothing is available. So yeah, or even if you want to override the existing route to new, use a new, a uh, view or new controller you can mention on, on top of that okay so these are the things which you require to add the basic part of the uh, plugins okay you can do as a part of uh, a plugin these are the uh, major files of that okay so as i mentioned this one these are the, like example bundle files okay uh, so it's like a this is our example bundle folder name. It will be a asset, config, controller. Okay, so as I mentioned only that, only you, I mentioned about the config and the, this bundle file, right? So you can have a many files here. Like if you are overriding any new uh, existing over views, you can mention inside the view by following, keeping the same structure of the, which is existing, uh, creating the old uh, core bundle file. Here you can mention the translation file, your model, like if you are doing some integration with the third party, you can keep the, all the integration required configurations and some integration files inside a folder. If you are going to override any form or create like uh, creating a form, you can keep here as a, a form level. Okay. If you are uh, overriding any event or any listening or anything, adding the extra to event, like suppose there are a lot of uh, events are there, add 
add lead, update lead, edit lead, add segment. These are a lot of events are available there because the event driven uh, architecture based also. So it has a lot of the events will be available. You can override that event also. You can even extend that event, you can, or you, you can even keep listening that event whenever you want to add an extra. Suppose you are adding a lead, right? You want to call your third party API. Third party API, uh, right? So you can just keep listing a particular add lead event and then call your API. Same thing you can do in the, when you are updating a lead, right? Keep listing that as an event and you can update the lead the same. So this is a way you can just keep, uh, put inside the event. The control lead is like whatever the our business logic will be there, like a lead controller there, okay, segment controller there, form controller there. Based on that, this control can be overriding also and can be added as well. Like you can have a different controller like those here and form or, or something, or um, like third party extension controller.com. You can have it like and inside that you can just uh, add your action function function and many other functionality you can add it there. And I said you can keep your the uh, inside in the asset, you can keep uh, your all the image file required to be done and the logo also required to be use it. Okay. So that's about the plugin creations. Okay, it's a very basic plugin creation functionality, but you can find out um, many more information in our uh, uh, Symphony website, like how do you can override the uh, the your controller file uh, override your existing views also oh all this can be a uh, find out in a symphony override bundle doc, uh, link i'll have refer in the reference link okay and uh, what are the tips and tricks like you can follow it okay first like clear the cache every time whenever you make a changes to the config file because always whenever you're making a changes fine is the bundle or maybe the, the structure has to know that okay you have made some changes you have replaced some uh, routing to particular things right so whenever you are running the changes in the config file make sure you clear the cache using your command called like php bean slash console clear cache okay third one like uh, so if you want to avoid manual work of creation of bundle use, I have started working on the one project called Motic Plugin Creator. There you can use it. It's a very basic uh, level of that. It's not right away the you know, full-fledged one. But uh, if you can uh, install it using the packages, OK? And uh, that it can be available inside your vendor folder. And once you run the command, it will be available inside directly. There you can mention the, the name of the thing. So I just walk through on that link. So this is a repository I have created for the plug. This is a less, very initial level of that. A lot of improvement has to be done. So here, inside the source file, I have created like a example bundle folder, which is required. What it does, generally does, it copy the all the folders inside the example bundle, and it uh, create a directory, whichever the bundle is required, and it's copy there, and it re replace the naming, whatever you will provide. Suppose if you provide a name called active bundle, it will replace this file name, and it will be replaced inside the controller name also, even it will replace the the config file like inside the config file if you have a example bundle it will go for whatever the name you will put right active bundle or any other name you will put it will replace this value it will replace the your author description also but this is the way this current uh, uh, the package you work is very initial as i mentioned it's very initial phase of that but uh, i'll be adding the more functionality more uh, as a as go and like so what is the requirement for this one? It's like required a PHP one because it's right away in supporting the Mautic 3 plus X version and 7.4 above. How do we install this one? Like same way how you install it using the packages, like uh, in a vendor folder, like come to the required v uh, six Mautic plugin creator. Or even you can just clone the repository inside or you can download a repository and paste it there in a vendor folder. Okay, how to use it? Currently it's not uh, supporting the custom command, like you're running the PHP, Space bean slash console. So working on that feature will be available very soon. Okay. So how do we currently run that? You can just run the PHP vendor a v six modding plugin creator SRC test.php. So I created a unit test which currently asks for a particular user. So it asks for a uh, what is the name of your bundle? You can mention the bundle name there. If you include a bundle name inside uh, the name, right? If you are going to use the active bundle. So 
So if you include an active bundle inside a name, then it's not going to be append as a bundle name. If you only include, uh, uh, like mention the active, then it will be add append the bundle in particular that name because that is a required for the particular creation of the bundle. Okay. So that's the way about the tips and tricks. Uh, I am uh, done with the like uh, the overall uh, information, but I want to just explain about how what are the scenario we, you can uh, extend a particular plugin, right? So uh, I'll just um, uh, explain about uh, one one scenario where if you want to do suppose like uh, previously more Motic Motic generally have one particular um, uh, identity, unique identity, right? Email as the identity. But some some company or some business owner may want to move it to that email to a mobile something like. Oh, this is one given the example. Okay, then you can just override that lead controller file inside the inside inside the Motic, right? To your plugin file. There you can make make a changes. Okay, to make that. A mobile as the identity and email as a secondary one. Then whenever you are importing or adding a uh, adding a lead, right? That can be a use as a mobile as a, a mobile as a unique identifier. Okay, this is the one one level of one uh, uses you can use it. A second, you I can explain uh, give you the example like uh, when we have a dialer system, right? Automated dialer system, and whenever there is a dialer happen, any call happen or any missed call happen, you want to map it, right? You want to create an entry inside your uh, Motic and track that. Okay, how many missed calls have been done? Okay, if any missed calls happen, though, let's give a run the some email marketing or SMS marketing uh, automation to give a reminder to the like okay, we have a we have. Uh, give a missed call. We are trying to reach out, reach out to you. Okay, give a uh, you can give a call to on this number or let us know press one or two something like that. Okay, that level of automation you can do that. Uh, how do we do that? Okay, you can just integrate your dialer machine inside using the custom plugin. Keep listening. Keep listening that whenever your dialer has been uh, uh, call done and once the database entry got inside the dialer and then you can automatically trigger the Motic API to create a lead and automatically it will map that particular status. You can create the custom status called miss call, like incoming, outgoing, such a way that and based on the means uh, automatically the lead got inserted into the Motic, right? Then our Motic marketing awesome or automation, you can set the scheduler there. Okay, you when you have to run that particular over the three hour or or end of the day or next day of the morning you have, you have given a missed call like that so these are the scenario you can use in your uh, uh, real life uh, case scenario or business case study uh, there are many more case studies has been implemented by the industries like a lot of uh, company has been using it but i'm just giving a base on the my experience what i have uh, done uh, so that's about uh, overall discussion and tech these are the reference I have given is here. Okay, this uh, Modic official uh, block for the Modic creation and this is step one. And here are the basic functionality which are the plugins available. And I have written some detailed blog about this one. You can uh, find out in the internetcutter.com how to create custom plugin in a Modic. You can uh, find out there. A lot of and the GitHub link also available in the blog. Okay. And thank you. I think uh, we can jump into the, these are the, my contact details. You can reach out to my Aviva2006. These are my handler. I'm available on GitHub, I'm available on the Twitter, LinkedIn, and also the internetcutter.com. Thanks for the, for the presentation. Uh, nice introduction to plugins and uh, also nice the work you did and the code you shared for uh, scaffolding uh, plugins. We have a few questions uh, in the chat. Um, yep. The first of um, uh, Mubin, and he's uh, interested in, uh, among other things, uh, if you create a plugin, how can you add it to the marketplace? Sorry? If you created the plugin, how can you uh, add it to the marketplace so that other people can use it? Okay, okay. Uh, there, is, there is a way to do it in a Motic uh, marketplace too. Okay, I'm not sure about the process because I have not done that. Right? But uh, there is a documentation available in a Motic uh, marketplace how to add that uh, plugin if you are want to available to the uh, all across the other communities also. Right. So it's possible, uh, and you refer to the documentation. Um, right. Uh, the other question you had, um, quite practical is uh, he wants to create custom actions. Um, and how is it possible to do that in, 
pl plugins, uh, for example, to uh, announce how campaigns work and send to WhatsApp rather than SMS, um, or to enable multiple channels. Do you have any, any insights or tips in that regard? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, like, if you want to do some uh, like WhatsApp messaging on some uh, different SMS, right? Particular actions, right? Uh, if you want to use, uh, uh, is there any actions happen inside the Mautic? Then you have to do some activity. You can uh, use the event listener there, and using the event listener, you can trigger your API. So, as I mentioned, right, our plugin can be used as a third-party integration tool. So, in a, inside the integration, our API integration data will be there. And in event, you can keep listening the event, such as suppose the uh, add uh, lead or update lead, or suppose lead got added to a particular segment, or any automation has been triggered. So automatically, you can keep listening on the particular event, and that can be a uh, trigger point for a particular API to uh, call it. And is there also a way uh, for the say the administrator to to have an, an action in the flow builder, say to to reuse it themselves, themselves, so that you add a component in in there that's reusable by the administrator mm, not sure about that okay for somebody to find out i guess yes it's for right. finding, finding people, so we Thanks have a few other time. we have a few other questions uh one from uh frederick wouters um say he wants to add an external content to, to emails that uh, Matic is sending, uh, how would you go about that? Uh, what do you want to do, indicate? Uh, external content. So pro probably not the content created in Matic, but you want to send out a campaign and include uh, information from uh, a different source. Mm -hmm. So maybe from mm -hmm. RSS or from an API or make it more personalized. Uh, he's adding examples, HTML yes, from yes. an external website. That can be done. That can be done in the custom plugins. Yes, that's the way because I mentioned right. Motic gives you a way to extend it the way you want. So whatever the things you have to do it, it can be extended. And is that an uh, announcement on the templates, or and then you have to choose that? Yep. When yep. sending space, yeah. Okay. Yep. I hope it gives enough direction for you, uh, Frederick, to uh, continue your yeah, search. Yeah. Um, uh, we have a few others uh, from uh, uh, Nimesh. Um, is there an existing plugin for doing Matic in, uh, in a multi-tenant mode? So probably you want to run one instance, uh, have it on a server somewhere, and uh, help multiple clients, or the client has multiple needs multiple inter inter interfaces. Uh, do you know about any setup like that? No, 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 right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I, I've seen blogs around about it and discussions, and I think it's uh, advisable to try to run it in, in separate instances, not per se multi-tenant, and uh, try CI/CD or uh, Docker to. Uh, oh, to build interesting, it. interesting. That would be my uh, my advice. I think it's not like a <laughs> another system. Yeah, and there are some hacks <laughs> Frederick mentioned in the yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah, but I think it's not 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 built for uh, for this. Okay. Um, and the last question is uh, from Andy. Um, how to add custom JavaScript to the, uh, extend landing pages or forms using uh, Mautic plugin? How to extend them? Uh, so if you want to have uh, a landing page built uh, via Mautic, um, or you mm -hmm. have a form that you embed in your website, and you w w want to add custom JavaScript on top of that. Yeah, we can, we can add it. But there is a no kind of like when you, when we have a landing page, right? They already build uh, on top of that, right? But it's still, we, you can uh, give some customization as the extension of the particular uh, the JavaScript uh, file. Right. Is there also some documentation about that that you know of? Mm, no, I'm not sure about documentations. Uh, but uh, are there example bundles no. that do that 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 people can look into? Uh, Bundle can do that, yes. Bundle can do that, yes. But if I do the out of the bundle, like outside the bundle only, then uh, I'm not sure about documentation, but bundle can surely do that. So probably it's good to dive in the code if you want to do it to it or ask a developer and see uh, what's a good example, how uh, Matic does it itself. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so these were, uh, we, were the questions. Um, Thank you, everybody, for uh, your attention yeah. and uh, being so active in the chat. It's good to have some interaction. Yeah, yeah.
Um, and a lot of the many cases found to even me to explore it. Yeah. So if there are any final thoughts, uh, post them in the in the chat. We'll uh, hang around a bit more, um, and see you then in a, the next session. Thanks again. Uh, Thank you for this session, uh, Avinash. Yep.